Hey everybody, this is Gabriel Iglesias, that's right. Oh my God, he is so cute. Yes I am, and I'm here to tell you how I got started. I was born in San Diego, California, and uh, little by little my mom and I migrated north till we got to Long Beach. I say migrated because uh, when you move, you have a destination, there's a deposit, a moving truck, people that help you. When you migrate, you pretty much leave in the middle of the night and uh, you wake up in a new city. So yeah, that's how mom rolled. My comedy heroes and influencers were uh, Eddie Murphy, Robin Williams, uh, Paul Rodriguez, and uh, this is gonna surprise a lot of people. I don't think he gets enough credit. Billy Crystal. I would watch comedy specials on, you know, whenever I could. He was either in the form of a VHS or HBO if I stayed up late. And uh, yeah, those are the ones I'm like, wow, yeah, real funny. I was 10 years old, I did a school talent show and I told a joke on stage. The joke was, why did the chicken cross the road? And the answer was, to check out the chicks. And that's cute when you're 10. It's creepy if you're 43. So just, <laughs> that was the first joke I ever told on stage. And then I followed it up with impressions and characters of, of just, you know, things that I experienced in my life. The first time I went on stage as a stand-up comic, not as a child going up in front of uh, you know other kids, was uh, April 10th of 1997. I know the date exactly because that was when everything just changed. I wasn't supposed to go up on stage. They had a show and the MC didn't show up. And a friend of mine was friends with the promoter and they're like, what are we gonna do? We need somebody to host this show. My buddy was like, uh, hey dude, they need an MC. You should go up there. You've always talked about wanting to do comedy. Here's your chance. And I'm like, no, no. and and. He was not taking no for an answer and he physically pushed me up on stage. I had nothing prepared when I went up there. I was just, I was just so scared and nervous. Like it was just like, whoo, just, well, all right, let's see what happens. That night, a guy who books a comedy show was there and that was my first paid gig. He goes, dude, if you come back here next week, I'll give you 20 bucks to go up on stage. So just like that, after my first gig, I got offered money, which I like, wow, here we go. Believe it or not, I had a really, really good day job that paid me a lot of money and benefits and I used to sell cell phones. I was clearing at the time in 1996, about five grand a month. And for a 20 year old, even now, that's insane. So imagine back then, I was living rich. I had a leather jacket, a new car, it was awesome. So to give that up to uh, pursue a career in comedy, it was, a, it was a big risk. Sometimes in life you gotta take a step backwards to take two steps forwards. You know, you gotta give something up. You gotta get uncomfortable. I'm trying to work on that with dieting and it's just, it's just not working out. I started off just being a comic. All I wanted to do was do comedy, but then you know people are like, well, if you're able to do comedy the way that you do it, you could probably get into television, get into film, get into voiceover, get into radio. And I'm like, I just wanted to tell jokes and it's, <laughs> come on. And so I think that's why I find myself doing different things in order to support the main thing. My main thing's always stand-up comedy. So whatever I need to do to secure the safety of my baby, which is stand-up comedy, I'll do. Keep your face out there, stay relevant, keep yourself in the mix so that you can support your baby here. All that was my first uh, regular television show. You know, a lot of people don't know, I, Gabriel Iglesias was a child star. A child star at the age of 21, because that's how old I was when I was on the show. But since I had braces and I looked younger, it worked out. And uh, they would always dress me in drag. That always, every episode I was wearing a dress because I could always do the girl voice, so they said, oh, we gotta play this up. And then uh, one of the shows, I got knocked unconscious because I was wearing a wig and I had uh, bangs. And I ran up on stage and there was beams and I ran into one of the beams and I woke up on the floor with a fireman standing over me. So next thing I know, I'm on a gurney, I'm on my way to the hospital. Did they let me change? No. So there I go, in the, in the hospital, <laughs> in drag and word gets spread around town that there was an artist who suffered a head injury on a Nickelodeon lot, and everybody thought it was Enrique Iglesias. And so, you know, the news started showing up to the hospital, and it was basically me coming out with the, you know, still in, in my clothes. I got offered a, a role years ago, and uh, I passed on it because my manager, at the time, thought it was a, a bad idea. It was a voiceover for a film. They said that if I were to do this movie, I would get 700 bucks and back end, back end means I get a percentage if the movie grossed over like 150 million. And manager said, guess what? You're getting an offer in Texas to go do some shows. That's more your speed, more worth your time. This is a stupid idea. It's not gonna do anything. And so I passed on the movie. And the movie turned out to be a blockbuster. Uh, I passed up the chance to co-star in the movie Happy Feet. I was not happy when I found out that it did what it did. And the person who took my part, well, he didn't take it, but I gave it up and he stepped in was Robin Williams. To have one of your comedy heroes come, like you gave up something and your comedy hero came in and he did it. 
and you want to talk about feeling this small. I mean, I was just like, oh my God, that was not a good conversation for my manager that day. I've worked in different times and done different things and, and little by little, it's just been growing and growing and growing. So to have a, a specific, the, the big break, I think there's been so many. There hasn't been one main thing that has been that, oh man, now we're here. Because people say, oh my God, you made it. When did you know you made it? And I've always tried to not say, I made it because I feel like if you say you made it, you're gonna stop working, you plateau. So always stay hungry, always stay like you're just reaching and going and going. But if you're playing at Madison Square Garden and you got a full arena of people, it's hard to stay humble. So that night when I says, next time someone asks me, when did you know you made it? I said, I might have a date. April 17, 2015, Madison Square Garden, New York City. And when I said that, the whole arena, ah! And then I started crying, I'm like, oh my God. You know, it was a happy moment and a scary moment at the same time because I'm like, oh my God, I said it out loud. I said it out loud that I made it and I'm like, so now, now what? Hey guys, thanks for listening. Uh, I've been your guest, Gabriel Iglesias. Check out my comedy special, One Show Fits All. I'm sorry for what I said when I was hungry. Or my TV show series, Mr. Iglesias. And um, hit me up online if you need a code. I know people.